Hey cellos, we're looking at measures 37 to 44 of Celtic Suite. This is pretty simple, but there's a few tricky spots in here. So there is one thing in this one that's gonna be the hardest thing to do, and it's to not really slam every quarter note. This is what I mean by that. This is how it should sound starting at 37. <laughs> Here's what I don't want. Right? So what we have to do is move our bow quickly through that uh, quarter note on beat three of every measure, but we don't want to push it so fast and we don't want to dig into that string. Right? So we have uh, starting at 37, four, four across, four. One on B, four. Four, four. One on B, four, one on B, four, and that's what we'll take for now. So let's take 37, we'll take the pickup into it, going in. One, two, three, one, two. So were you able to hear how I was kind of moving those notes, making them kind of silky uh, and not just really bombing them. That's really important. That's all going to come from the bow. You have to move it nice and softly and gently across that string uh, on the quarter notes, especially. All right. Now let's talk about those a uh, couple of measures leading up into 45. So we're looking at 42, 43, 44. Starting at 42, we have fourth finger G. And now we have B. We haven't seen B much on G string, if ever. So then we're gonna play third finger. And I'm just gonna practice those two or that measure by itself before I even try anything else. All right. And then I'm looking at the next measure. We have a slur in there, so that's important to keep in mind. We're gonna have fourth finger C, and then uh, uh, D and G. Now I want you to take your bow. I want you to put it in the music. I want you to take that slur out, put it up in the air. We'll come back to it later because we're gonna try that measure without the slur first. So it's gonna be C, D, G. See, that wasn't very good, so I'm gonna try that again. That was better, so I'm gonna do it again just to make sure I can actually do it and it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, see, that's it. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna take that slur back out of the air and I'm gonna put it back in my music. And then I'm gonna practice just that measure by itself. So it's going to be down on C and then up on the slur. One more time. Yeah. And then I'm going to look at the next measure, which is just an open D. One more time. I'm going to add the note before it, which is third finger B. So now that I have all of that, I can add it in the context of the rest of this. So I'm going to start pick up to 37. One, two, three, one, two. Now we're going to talk about 45 to the end real fast, even though it's a little bit different. We've, we're practicing the vibrato in the last video. Uh, so this one is going to be the same thing, but there's a few differences. One, we have to pay attention to our dynamics here, right? Even in the middle of 37, it changed from forte to mezzo forte. Uh, that's just for you. Everybody else is going to be mezzo forte later, but you guys have to drop down there. All right. And then at 45, uh, we have this big day crescendo. I say big meaning it takes a couple measures to get there because it's going to be pretty small. We're turning it from like a volume six to like a volume four. We're going from mezzo forte to mezzo piano. So we're going to have those whole notes at uh, 47, 48, and 49 to really back off. And then we have that slow down and the fermata on the last two measures. So let's look at the uh, 45 to the end real fast. So remember, we're going to use vibrato during these dotted quarter or dotted half notes. One, ready, go. I'm gonna get a little bit quieter. Yeah, 
and that's all that is. So on those last two measures, you have to be watching me, right? Because uh, I'm going to give you every beat by itself. And then in that last one, think of a plane. A plane, when it takes off, is not going to go from bloop, fly, right? It's going to get going, and then it's going to slowly take off while some of it's still on the ground. This can be the same with our bow. We're ending with this on an up bow. So I'll even play it up here so you can see. I'm just going to keep it moving the same direction because you hear that ring at the very end of it. That's what we want. And that's only going to happen if we keep moving the bow while we lift off the string. Otherwise, we'll have... That's gross. All right. So 45 to the end one more time. Here we go. One, ready, go. video, but it was a lot of stuff. If you have any questions, let me know.